I'm Nathan Scott, and welcome to Changemakers, an initiative from Australian Wool Innovation bringing you the best research from around the country. We all want to be better sheep producers, but the only way that we can be better is to change. If we keep doing things the same way we've always done them, we'll keep getting the same results we've always got. That's why we're here, Changemakers. Now your time of joining and length of joining. Is it something that you've researched and concluded that this is the best possible option for you? Or are you simply doing what you've always done? Right now could present the perfect opportunity for you to review your joining plan. It is so important because the time and length of your joining defines your time of lambing, lambing period and lamb age variation, when new nutritional demands will peak, the date of your weaning, and even the ewe recovery length to the next joining. For more information on the importance of ewe recovery, check out episode two of AWI Changemakers. Let's start with joining length, because perhaps it's the simpler of the two components. Research has shown that joining for longer than five weeks will only result in an extra 5% viable lambs. And that makes sense, because we know that those later born lambs tend to be marked at a younger age, weaned at a younger age, and never really given the opportunity to perform. Not only that, there's not very many of them, and they often just become that nuisance mob. And so, given that a ewe cycles every 17 days, a 35 day joining gives her two opportunities to get in land. Generally, that is all that's required for more than 95% of ewes, provided that they can find a fit and healthy ram in that time. A tight joining pattern can be great. It can allow you to target specific nutrition to your ewes based on their point in pregnancy, lactation, and even in their recovery. In pursuit of this, we're seeing even more people move away from a traditional joining and into a split joining that will allow them two or three lambings. It can allow them to reuse rams and even reuse some of their lambing paddocks. It comes with a word of caution, however, and that is that it can complicate your system. For most people, a simple five week joining is absolutely perfect. But when do we do it? You should consider what else is happening on your farm throughout the year as well. Are we trying to avoid sowing time within your cropping program? Or should we be thinking about making sure that your weaning doesn't drift into harvest? All those things should be considered as well. Also, sheep are seasonal breeders and are in season as day length decreases. Merino is less so than British breeds, but they're still seasonal nonetheless. So if it's numbers that you are chasing, then later is better. We need to avoid Jason, July, August, September, October, and November. Day length begins to reduce from December 22 through to June with the peak U response in March and April. In Mediterranean climates, the later you go, however, the closer to the end of your pasture production season you get, and that brings potential issues for growing out lambs and weaners. For joining out of season, consider nutritional flushing or using teasers to stimulate cycling and increase ewe ovulation rates prior to joining. Teasers can be either vasectomised rams or weathers treated with testosterone, and these should be introduced to the ewes for two weeks prior to joining. We do recommend, however, that you seek specific advice on the use of flushing and teasers for your individual situation. Growing enough feed is also really important for lamb survival. Check out AWI Changemakers Episode 1 for more information. If you are not in a Mediterranean climate, you may consider aligning feed production and peak ewe nutritional demands at lambing to be more important than joining in season. If you can look to understand and measure your own average pasture growth rates and seasonal trends, then like this Mediterranean example, you can look to align peak ewe demand and pasture supply for your own property. This doesn't just mean growing as much feed as possible to hit your targets at the start of lambing, but also growing enough feed throughout lambing to match your stocking rates and keep the optimum feed in front of your ewes. Lamb too early, and even if you hit your targets at the start of lambing, your ewes will have eaten you out of house and home before you get to the end of the lambing period. So, how do we pull it all together? Put simply, you want to be able to cash in on your ewes seasonality, match their peak nutritional requirements to your pasture growth curve, and leave enough time in the season to grow your weaners out effectively. There's always a trade-off. If you lamb too early, you'll mark less lambs. If you lamb too late, you are going to have to work harder with those weaners to get them through. We know that economically, you're better off to match your nutritional requirements to your pasture growth curve, even if that means having to supplementary feed your weaners later on. There is no perfect joining date that will suit everyone, but there will be a perfect joining date for you. The best thing that you can do is arm yourself with the information around your own pasture growth rates and your own pasture growth curve. 
Then match it with the other activities that are happening within your own business and design a joining date that will suit your modern sheep business and not just a joining date that you've always used. After all, whatever we do well today, we can do better tomorrow.